Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. There's still a lot of summer left, but time is running out to save on a new Kia from Sunbury Motors Kia. I want to see you in a Kia. It's the Summer Sticker Sales Event at Sunbury Motors Kia. But you have to hurry in before these deals fade away like the summer sun. Sunbury Motors Kia offers you the low price promise on every new Kia on the lot. Just plus it. 2020 Kia Serenos with up to $7,200 off. As low as $23,998. 2020 Kia Sportages with up to four grand off. Starting at just $22,793. Plus, Sunbury Motors Kia will give you top trade and value for your current vehicle. Bring your trade, look for a sticker, and save. Remember, every new Kia comes with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. The Summer Sticker Sales Event at Sunbury Motors Kia on the Strip in Hummel's Wharf. Savings include all applicable discounts and rebates, including Sunbury Motors Kia discount. Warranty is a limited powertrain warranty. For details, see dealer or go to Kia.com. Sports talk where your voice counts. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motor Studio, here's Steve Jones. Good afternoon, everybody. It is the Steve Jones Show, News Radio 1070 WKOK. Matt Catrillo here with you. Steve will soon be there from the Sunbury Motors studio. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. The day after of what was a tough day for college football yesterday. No Big Ten football this fall. No Pac-12 football this fall. But then we learned earlier today the Big 12 still a go. They announced their conference schedule, SEC, ACC, trying to keep things going as is by starting September 26th. That's when the Big 12 is going to start their conference games, but they're allowing one non-conference game beforehand, which is interesting. But I know it was kind of in the works in some of their talks and the schedules. No word yet about Nebraska's future, if they're going to try to play in the Big 12 or not. Big 12 commissioner saying today that Nebraska hasn't met those, hasn't uh, talked with them yet. And we're going to have Dave Rebson today from BTN join us. Well, and, of course, Steve, he, he talked to uh, to Kevin Warren earlier today and a, very, a lot of interesting stuff from the commissioner that we'll get into with Dave today. Uh, yeah, the commissioner struggled, in my opinion, yesterday. I think that's the nice way of putting it. I thought, I thought, uh, I thought it was quite awful yesterday. Well, it's not the easiest spot to be put in. I, I want to be eminently fair uh, about this. Uh, what I find interesting today are the comments out of Ohio State. That's what I find interesting today. Ryan Day is making no bones about it. <laughs> They're exploring playing games now maybe it's a couple games maybe it's three games whatever but he said we're allowed to play non-conference games why don't we play some non-conference games here it's one thing where you sit back and obviously Nebraska but this is one of those step back and say whoa by the way did you see the Penn State uh, COVID testing results we this being the 12th, it's today's release day. I was still surprised they came out. Oh, no, I expected them to come out. You, you know, want to know why? When your testing rate on positives is 1.4%, okay, that is a tribute to, now, of course, uh, there are eight positives out of the 500 
what was the number, 560? Eight positives. So that's what? 0.014. So it's 1.4%. All right? In my fertile math mind. And that is a tribute to the head coach, the coaching staff, the staff, the training staff, the medical staff, you know, Wayne Sebastianelli, Andy Muttnam, all the way through, and a true tribute. And then, of course, this goes to, like, Greg Miskinis with basketball and people like that, and John Salazar and uh, Greg Billy, Pete Seidenberg. All the protocols they put in place, and then the this is the ultimate testament to the discipline with which the student athletes have taken this whole thing seriously in an effort to play. So I'm glad they put that out. So that everybody knew that the student athletes that they follow, love, think so highly of, worked hard and were disciplined enough to turn in that kind of test result. So I'm glad they put it out. And I said yesterday I thought they would. And the reason I said I thought they would was because I thought the numbers would be really good. And they were. Doug in Wellsboro. Hello, Doug. Steven, how's how are man, you? How's my man doing today? Very good. Good. A couple questions for you. Sure. Number, number one, what changed since last week? Last week we had a schedule put out. What test results, anything, has changed from one week to the next for them to delay the season till spring? I believe in their meeting they said as many as 10 Big Ten athletes have myocarditis, which is the inflammation of the heart muscle. You can get myocarditis. Myocarditis affects about 200,000 people a year. So it's a decent number, but it's not a massive number. You can get myocarditis from COVID, obviously, but you can also get it from the flu, influenza A and B, common cold. You can also get it from Lyme disease. You can get it from rubella. You can get it from hepatitis B and C. And you can also get it from herpes. But it turned out that they feel that COVID was responsible for the 10 cases they heard of. You also have an infectious disease expert who is the president at Michigan and also the medical people in the Big Ten, and I think that's, in the end, what swayed them. Are they scared of the liability of it? They won't come out and say it, but you would have to think that has to be something that was discussed. To be fair, they should have and, talked to the medical board for the SEC or the ACC, probably. Well, and again, why is it? And I was asked about this yesterday, Doug. What do we usually do when we're told something medically? We're always advised to quote get a second opinion and see if the opinions match up. Sometimes they don't. Well, that's what you're seeing here. The opinions don't always match up. Um, next question. If they do, by some miracle, play in the spring, will guys like Michael Mennett, Shaka Tony, will they even play? Not the top tier guys like Pat Farmers, who's going to, yeah. he's guaranteed he's going to be a millionaire, you know, in, in five mm-hmm. months. He'll sign a contract like Michael will. Will, will the next tier down, like Michael Mennett, Shaka Tony, will those guys even play? If, if they're, they'll all get draft grades in December, Doug. If their draft grade is third day or free agent, now it becomes a real decision for them about playing and seeing if they can improve their draft stock. If they're told that they're day one or day two, which is the first three rounds, then you can almost be assured they're not going to play. Now the next question would be, all right, you may have some opt-outs because of the draft. Fair. Do you allow early enrollees to play? I mean, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked and a lot of questions that need to have some answers. 
because we're in, into uncharted territory. So I think those are two legitimate questions. Question you asked, I would expect players that if they think they're going to be in the first two days, I think it's be automatic they opt out. I mean, I, I'm, I, you're in a you're in a spot where you're on to the next step in your life. If you think you really need to play, either get yourself into the draft or at minimum solidify a third day, you might end up playing. Yeah, I know the top tier guys are not going to play. I was more wondering about like the seniors, the upperclassmen who are. Yeah. I mean, they're they're good players. And they're going to get drafted at some point, but they, like you said, they're going to have a decision whether they're going to play and risk injury or you know or call it good. Can I get myself into it? Can I get my? Let's take Stephen Gonzalez, who's not a part of this equation. Stephen Gonzalez, a good college offensive lineman. Uh, he ended up being a free agent that signed with the Arizona Cardinals. Now, you don't know in advance that you're going to be the free agent with the, with the Arizona Cardinals. But say you're told in your draft grade, hey, we think you're a free agent. I think now you're inclined to play to show that, hey, look, I should be drafted. Now, or if you're told, hey, look, we think you're a draftable player, you're probably going to be like rounds five or six or whatever. You probably then sit out at that point and think, okay, I've done enough. Cause I, can I do something to get myself into the second day? And they'll probably tell you, probably not. And at that point, you probably opt out as well. How are the TV contracts get structured with, like, ABC, Disney? If they don't play at all, uh, uh, is the Big Ten going to get paid? I mean, it, no. is this part of the equation? I assume not. You have to, you have to play – to get paid. Um, they so want they, product for on TV and say for ESPN right. and ABC and stuff like that. So I, I understand why, they're going to try and right. play. I think in the spring they'll attempt to play. Now, how many games? You have to sit back and say, all right, do you play the 10 games you scheduled? All right. Do you play the nine games that were originally scheduled? Or because you're worried about the 21 fall season and and not enough time in between seasons, you play divisional games, have a Big Ten championship game, East versus West, but on that same day, leading into a night game that's a championship game, two plays two, three plays three, four, four, and all the way down the line, give everybody a seventh game. I mean, those are all things that need to be explored because – if you start in January, I think you can play 10 games. That way, if you go to September, I think you can play maybe 11 games and start the, the weekend after Labor Day, just to give a little bit of a buffer. Okay. Uh, last thing. So on Fridays, I call in or I, uh, I listen for the 430 segment with the King. <laughs> you have, you have some explaining to do about what happened last Friday at 5 or 430. All right, Kevin, uh, was, Kevin was wrong, but he pummeled you. He did pummel me. No. And, and you no, have some explaining no. to do to hold up your end of it. Can I explain uh, the conversation the two of us had at 510? Yeah. All right. Number one, I'm, I'm driving out to the golf course. I give him a call, and he just starts laughing. <laughs> All right. And, of course, I'm laughing. Because we will deliberately, for a lot of fun, take opposite views just to take opposite views, and and we and we have fun with it. So yes, he pummeled me pretty good, uh, but he did it all in good faith. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I was, was pulling for you, Steve, but he was hammering you. He was, ha he was hammering me really hard. But as he said, he says, you know, the funny thing about the conversation we got into, he says, you know darn well every week I'm like a pendulum, Steve. One <laughs> I think they're great. Next week I'm like this. And he says, I, you know, so it just depends on how I wake up. <laughs> so, so if anybody knows, it's me. <laughs> so we had a – he says – he said, but I think it ended up being a good show, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was good programming. Yo, oh, that's why I love having him on. You know what? What really has been gratifying for me has been how the audience has taken to having him on. You know, that's my brother, for goodness sakes. Oh, he's awesome. I really, 
And I just I appreciate that, and he appreciates it. But this is two days in a row we've heard about the King Matt. I mean, he's kind of yeah, taking over the whole show. I know. I can't show. believe it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, now there are people saying that maybe I should guest on Fridays and he should host. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm setting my alarm for Friday or for yeah for Friday at four thirty. I better hear a, a comeback here or something. I'm, I'm going to have to somehow <laughs> hold up my end of the bargain here because I feel like I let down a segment of the audience by not being more passionate. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for taking my call. Thanks, Doug. <laughs> this is amazing. Well, he is the king after all, but we didn't think the king of taking over the uh, the, the segment. The last, <laughs> the last two days we had calls about him. This is crazy. I mean, well, now I've, now I've got people texting me left and right. You know, can he host? Can you just guest? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he's hosting a show, I can guarantee you it's going to be a two-hour wild ride every day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No doubt about uh, that. The Ohio State story has become, now, nothing may come of it. All right? But it's become an interesting story here in the last couple of hours. Ryan Day has not been shy about saying, you know, I mean, why can't we play some non-conference games in the fall? With all due respect to the fine people in Nebraska, and they have fine people in Nebraska, and there's a lot of passion out there for football. It means a lot to the state. But they are... Ryan Day's been the one that has been coming out and saying, hey, you know what? Why can't we do this? And... Part of the problem they have is the grant of rights. That's going to be a big problem. All right. But Brian Day has not been shy about saying, you know, I think we can play. He also is in favor that, hey, once we get to the spring, let's get out of the gate in January. Now, that may mean, for example, I mean, playing in January, you're like, oh, my goodness, this is going to be so cold in the Big Ten. So one thing about the Big Ten, you have neutral sites, Ford Field, U.S. Bank, Lucas Oil Stadium, that are domes. It's not like you don't have availability of indoor facilities if you needed to use them. Ryan Day, we are still exploring options. I promise you that. Some of the things Nebraska asked about are some of the things we are asking about. Taking your calls at 800-795-9565. This is the Steve Jones Show on News Radio 1070 WKOK. Now from the Sunbury Motors studio, here's Steve Jones. Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Q, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf and online at sunburymotors.com. Ford, Lincoln, Kia, Hyundai. Great pre-owned inventory, tremendous service department, all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury. Sunbury Motors, Kia Roots 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. I'm going to add in one little add-on for Tom and the Sunbury Motors crew. Um, I think most of you know that Penn's Tavern is their baby, right? So I was asking Tom last week, how's Penn's Tavern going? Well, it, you know, obviously Matt and I have been out there a few times. They have that great deck. But they also have that a rather significant space between the deck and the Susquehanna River. They have it is a great dining experience out there. Wow, plenty of tables. So they're saying there's a couple of people on their staff. You know, they'll give them a pedometer. They're putting in a night, sometimes six to seven miles on that pedometer. I mean, now, is that unusual? I mean, I know that, the, like, the jacket and tie, sometimes just pacing puts six to seven miles on. <laughs> but that's that's has nothing to do with business. It actually has to do with suit light. So, I mean, it's just a different, you know, ball game. You know. All right. 
the uh, the SEC, the ACC, the American, and the Big Twelve, and the Sun Belt are continuing with their plans to play in the fall. I am really rooting for them to be successful with it, as I am with the NFL. Why? Because then it would give the Big Ten more confidence in the ability to do this starting in January in the spring semester. That's why. With that, we bring in Neil Riddell from the Altoona Mirror. Neil, hope you and yours are well. Welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. Thanks for calling. Hey. How are you? Well, I'm doing well, and I hope you and yours are safe and sound with no issues. Yeah, I think as long as we're healthy and working right now, it's about all we can do, right? Exactly. Uh, I think the last thing anybody expected on the face of the earth when you and I took these jobs a long, long time ago is that there would be a season or a fall with no football. Was it jolting to you when the word came down yesterday, or were you just prepared from the weekend that it was going to play out that way? Well, I think both. <laughs> Not to be on the fence, but, you know, you know, just such culture shock when you begin to realize. Um, I feel bad, obviously, for everybody involved. Um, that, that was my main takeaway, uh, particularly the players and all the uncertainty and all the fans and all the people and businesses in State College that um, that it's just become such a tradition on Saturdays and um, you know hey I you know we don't know any you know whether whether this is the right decision whether they're whether they could have waited any more I don't know I can't criticize it I I, I think there's just too much uncertainty about the entire thing that has brought the world to its knees so i certainly can understand it and and can't criticize it but i will miss it oh and we all will miss it uh no question what about the uh i'll get to this part next should schools be allowed in the big 10 you know we talk about spring practice all the time but be allowed in the month of october for example or late september and october have what quote fall practice Oh, absolutely. I, I don't see why not. I mean, they, they didn't have spring practice this year, right. and they don't know what they're going to be doing next spring. I don't see why they can't continue to practice under the protocols that they've been experiencing and look like doing a good job with for the past couple months uh, with the kids on the campus. Why? Why shouldn't the development continue in some way. I don't think they should just uh, have to completely shut down and pick up a football again in February. Uh, yeah, I think they should be able to practice and lift and and um, and uh, and scrimmage. And, and by the by that time, they'll probably have a better idea what's going on in the NFL. Um, you know, whether there's a rash of of uh, you know virus spikes or not, they might have a model they can also look at there. But yeah, I think they should be able to practice and, and maintain some level of a program, hard as it is without games. Which then uh, <clears throat> brings me to the next part. You brought it up talking about the NFL. Uh, people have asked me about the SEC, the ACC, the Big Twelve, the American and their plan to play. And my answer has been, I'm rooting for them to succeed because I feel if they do succeed, it then tells you that the Big Ten, should they go forward with the spring, can also, has the chance to succeed. How do you view that? Yeah, I think that's fair, Steve. I mean, I don't know what the posture is going to be with these other conferences. Do they now look at the Big Ten and the Pac-12 as there's kind of some blood in the water and they can gain recruiting ground and exposure, uh, you know, to a nation that is really starved for some live entertainment and and a pick-me-up? Or, I mean, what's going to happen? I mean, the big risk is what happens if there's – uh, you know, a, a rash of uh, of the virus, even more so, and God forbid somebody um, dies. I mean, you know, there's a big risk that these schools are taking. So, um, you know, I, I 
I, I'm just not sure, you know, where that goes. If, if if these other schools succeed, yeah, maybe it's a bump in the road and people will look back and say, well, they erred on the side of safety, but at what price? But all of us are, are paying a price. So many people, whose businesses or newspapers or media outlets have been affected. So um, I, I guess, you know, you can't really be c criticized for practicing taking the safe way out, but if the other schools uh, are all participating, um, you know, will the Big Ten have some regret if they're participating safely and they're and they're able to execute their seasons without further damage? I think once you make a decision like this, don't worry about regret. You know, it's, I mean, you've made the decision. Now make the best of it. Um, and, I, and I understand why you said that. You know, Ryan Day has had an interesting day. He's had an interesting afternoon. Uh, Ryan Day basically has uh, said that it's a fluid situation. Uh, he talked about starting the, uh, a spring season in early January, but he also said that about the possibility of competing this fall. Now, this is today. Athletic Director Gene Smith confirmed to Cleveland.com that Ohio State is asking questions and looking for answers as to possible options. Day said this is a fluid situation. I know Gene and I talked again this morning at lengths about this. We're still exploring those options. This thing is moving, it's changing, and we're looking at everything. I can promise you that. When you hear those comments, which were made within the last 90 minutes... What's your thought on that? Because, I mean, this is not, with all due respect, this is not Greg Schiano saying that. Yeah. I, does, does that mean that the Big Ten is prepared to do an about face on Friday, um, just as it did really on, on this past Saturday, and, uh, and allow people to play uh, three or four games uh, who knows what he's talking about as far as uh, our Big Ten teams allowed to play right. in the conference or out of the conference um, this season. What's that mean? He said uh, he referred to the process as Ohio State trying to turn over every stone. However, he did emphasize that exploration cannot drag on indefinitely. Nebraska's administration, as you and I both know, released a statement saying that it would also keep exploring options to play this fall. Uh, I just find this fascinating and interesting because we do know, I mean, the one thing we do know, Ohio State voted to delay. They did not vote uh because Gene Smith said so, that that they wanted to go that way. But what do you think of the concept of playing some in the league, I mean, uh, some in the spring? I mean, it's a spring semester. It's not playing in the spring. Uh, and also, how many? What what number do you think could be a comfortable number to play during the spring semester? With the idea you have to play in the fall semester as well. Wow. Um, my interpretation of his comments, Steve, thinking it through a little more, I, I think he may mean about the spring, spring model of some sort. And when he said about Justin Fields, they got to let their kids know pretty soon. Yes. Uh, what the, I mean, because hey, look at Penn State's guys that are uh, upperclassmen that either decided to come back for this season or mm -hmm. or have not out opted out. All right. What, is it in their best interest? You already saw their best player leave before this happened. Is it in the best interest of whether it's Justin Fields or, or Pat Fryermuth or Michael Mennett or guys that are looking at the next level and in position to play in the spring. Right. Um, I think you really can make a case that, that it's not. Um, but so I think that's what day probably means. I, I just don't know whether the Big Ten is, is going to turn around and say, well, you know what, we thought more about this now. We're going to let everybody play five games and start October 10th. Um, I mean, I guess they can do anything they want, but um, 
it just seems like how many times are you going to um, continue to update this story? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I, I find it amazing. I think the players in the spring that feel like I think their first or second day, all right, okay, shouldn't play. The guys that are third day, like later third day, or could be free agent, they may want to show what they can do. I think it's just going to have to be an individual answer. And remember, Penn State in 2014 played with 63 scholarship guys. So uh, so it's not out of the realm of possibility you can do it. And also there has to be a lot of other questions answered. Here's one for you. Do you allow early enrollees to play? Yeah. <laughs> uh. You know, I, I mean, would say I, so. Yeah, I mean, I think these are all questions that need to be explored. Yeah. Um, you know, just first blush, I would say yes. I mean, everybody who's still on board, it's all hands on deck now. I mean, this is a pandemic. It's a crisis. You're coming out of it. And then what's the model going to look like? You may have, you know, you don't have, obviously you don't have Parsons. You may not have some of your real, your upperclassmen leaders. Why wouldn't you let a kid... Uh, you know, who just got there in January, uh, at least participate um, or be eligible to play. Why not? If you're going to do it in the spring. I'm not saying. I thought it was interesting the day was uh, so open to it yes. when his mentor dismissed it immediately yesterday. Yes. <laughs> He's very, uh, evidently very open to it. Uh, as we know with flu season, A vaccine isn't the be-all, end-all. They'll say it's 40 to 50% effective. If there is a vaccine put out for this, and it seems like it's on on the fast track, we'll find out as time goes. If that were to happen, what would that do for your confidence in the ability of teams to play? Well, I think that's what we're all waiting for, Um, you know, to try to remove that cloud. Um, So I think that would, would... go a long way although i mean when you look at some of these numbers particularly in in certain areas where where it's been we haven't been overrun you know here locally i know you know uh, this past week more people are being tested there were 60 cases in blair county this past week which was the most Oh. Of any one week, how many? Um, Six, 60? sixty. Wow, it's a no. Okay. Yeah, so it's starting to climb up toward uh, Center County and Huntington County uh, regionally. But as far as the hospital being overrun and, and whatnot, we have not, uh, you know, heard that. So, you know, I, I just can't get a feel for the You know, the way it's been administered in so many areas you're still you know they didn't let anybody play golf for a couple months yeah. which really hurt a lot and a lot of, hurt a lot of these courses when you can play that game uh, and social distance and then you know golf was able to resume and it's been resuming and everybody seems to be uh, you know, moving along, you know, I see people playing tennis, some playing tennis. I mean, you know, it's, it's so much of an individual interpretation uh, of, you know, I walked into an, I know I'm off track and I'm sorry, but no, no, uh, I walked fine. into a nursing home to see my dad yeah. uh, after five months, uh, two weeks ago, there were three old men sitting on the porch and you know, one of them had his mask, my dad, uh, you know, around his chin. The other guy was completely masked up, and the other guy didn't have a mask at all. And so we were outside. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just saying that every time you turn, you see people driving around alone in their car wearing a mask. Yeah, uh, I know. So, but then you see other people that are, you know, don't wear one at all. And I think when you go inside, you should wear one in you know these stores and whatever, but um, I just think there's so many loose interpretations, yeah. and you see what's happened with the high school sports, and it's just it's really been a mess. Yeah, it has really been. sad mess. Yeah, I know here in Center County there've been eight total the last five days, which is good. Yeah, that's good. a good number. Hey, Neil, here's uh, hoping for an Easter or Passover uh, Rose Bowl. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Matza in Pasadena. That'd be cool. 
Absolutely. Neil Riddell, Altoona Mirror. Dave Repson, BTN, next half hour. Neil Kulong, final half hour, the king tomorrow. We have to keep pointing out. I mean, I mean, I say the king on Friday. King's on Friday. I feel like now we have to promote the king. Yes, king on Friday. Just just for uh just for ratings. All right. <laughs> here on News Radio 1070 WKOK brought to you by Sunbury Motors. That commercial where the two girls are blah 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 back and forth. That was an actual dinner table conversation at the suits at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Really. Tell me I'm wrong. Uh, uh, <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> All right. Great to have you with us. Dave Revson, next half hour. Uh, I thought Dave and Mike Hall really, uh, on what was not an easy day, they asked poignant good, solid, at times tough questions. And if they needed to repeat a tough question, they did because it wasn't answered. And Dave, I thought, you know, Mike Hall, too, because I have a... I have a I, what's interesting about these guys, you guys don't really know them. We do. And Mike Hall's just a great guy. Dave Revson's a great guy. And Dave Revson's the kind of guy, if he's your, he's your neighbor, you're getting get together with him as often as you can. He's just an awesome guy. Um, and we'll talk to Dave in the next half hour, but I thought he was brilliant. And Neil Kulong in the final half hour, King on Friday at 4.30. As the last two days, we've had more phone calls about the King than we have about, how about that? You know, Doug today, Baird yesterday, I mean, King's on a roll. He doesn't even know it. Right now he's welding something. Big 12, uh, one of the keys for the ACC and the SEC going forward was getting the big, they didn't get them to do it, but the Big 12 decided they want to play in the fall as well. They're going to start September 26th. And I want to, you know, I'm rooting for everybody, the NFL. These three conferences, the American, the Sun Belt, I'm rooting for them to be able to pull this off with some semblance of ease. Because I think at that point, it gives you confidence about what you're able to do with your protocols. Today's show brought to you by Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, and online at sunburymotors.com. Ford Lincoln Kia Hyundai. Great pre owned inventory, fabulous sales staff, great deals to be had all at Sunbury Motors, 4th Street in Sunbury, Sunbury Motors Kia, Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf, on News Radio 1070 WKOK.